good morning and welcome back to a new vlog on my channel this intro was one of the most chaotic intros i've ever done i think but two of my good friends rachel and meredith were in the netherlands Rachel is from Scotland and Meredith is from America, but she lives in Scotland. And they were visiting me here in Holland. I've been to Scotland a few times as well. Meredith and I met each other over the internet and then she was on a very impromptu trip to the Netherlands. Well, she was in Brussels, but it was my birthday. And I was like, hey, do you want to come over to Rotterdam? And she was like, yeah, whatever, I'll take the train. <laughs> and that's how we became friends. We had a great weekend. I showed them all sorts of things in my favorite cities, like in Amsterdam and here in Rotterdam. And we had a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed that little montage today's wednesday i'm going to be working today the sun is out i feel so good i feel like oh my god spring is coming this is me in every other vlog i just really go with the seasons because like the changing of the seasons always makes me feel happy like life is moving life is forever changing nothing ever stays the same i'm getting really philosophical here on an early wednesday morning <laughs> this is the book i'm currently reading i've almost finished it i was getting a little bit stuck in it i've just been having a hard time really getting into this book to really enjoy it because i've enjoyed a lot of t kingfisher's writing but this just seems to drag on a little bit for me so i'm very sorry to say that do you have to say now now that i'm more towards the end it's picking up a little bit like things are happening i think the point of this is as well that it's like characters you would normally not see as the main character of a fantasy story and it's also meant for them to be doing mundane things like on their grand quest to kill the prince because we follow mara who's a princess turned nun and her sister is in an abusive relationship with the king mara is basically on a quest to set out to kill the king but she has to do all these impossible tasks she meets all these monsters and goblin markets and scary things happen along the way there's also a demonic chicken in this my favorite thing about the book definitely a lot of good elements i think i just wasn't vibing with it for whatever reason don't know what it is i think maybe if i audiobook this it would have been a bigger hit with me i don't know i just i have a feeling <laughs> but like i said the plot is picking up now that we're moving towards the end i really like the side plot of the little romance that's developing as well so i'm still enjoying myself so when i finish this i really don't know what i have to read because i have so many options and so many books i want to read like i have garden spells here which i've been dying to read forever but i don't know i just it, i'm not sure it seems like the right mood so we'll have to see other than that still working hard for my spring collection today i've been talking to manufacturers but i really want my products to be made ethically and that seems to be quite the hassle so i'm now thinking of buying some equipment myself so i can make more different sorts of products myself in my webshop like i have a webshop where i sell my illustrations and stuff I do really cool bookmarks if you want to check it out support a girly so yeah there's more work of that today i want to film some outfit tiktoks i'm just happy that the sun is out and yeah i'll keep you guys updated with my reading and my life and yeah oh and also look at this isn't it so cute so this design is one from my web shop and it was stolen a lot and a company stole it to make these cups they stole it accidentally sort of <laughs> because the design was sold on etsy as a copyright free design because somebody stole it off me and it's not a copyright free design it's exclusively mine so i contacted the girl from the company she was really kind she took it down and then she sent me the one cup they had in storage so now i have this cup i did already ruin it unfortunately so i'm not sure if i want to start selling these myself because they seem very vulnerable i don't know would it be acceptable if i added like a card that said wash with care and then sold them i, I don't know how i feel about it but maybe for cons and stuff comic cons this could be really cool those are all my updates now i'll finally let you go i hope the sun is shining wherever you are because mm, this is so good <laughs>
here. So I've been having quite the day today. I always try to film videos on Friday, but I'm just, every idea I come up with today, I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> I don't want to film that. <laughs> I've written down like a ton of ideas and probably some of them are good, but I'm thinking it's just today. Like probably when I try this another time, I'll be like, that's a fine idea. I'll just do that. Or maybe I just feel like the content is not inspired enough. I don't know. Anyway, I was like, I'll just put the camera down, continue this reading vlog. I'll at least have something to upload next week. And I'm gonna do my makeup in the meantime for just chat away. That's my plan. And then maybe after I've done my makeup, I'll be like, oh, actually idea number six was great. I think sometimes also because I have built this job for myself where I do so many different things at the same time that it gets really hard trying to balance all of those things out. I run my web shop where I sell my art, I do markets with that, then I have some freelance jobs on the side. I mean those come and go so I don't have those all the time. To pack orders every week, then there's the YouTube channel where I want to upload every week, there's my social media content, I've been trying to be more active on Instagram to hopefully also get some people to shop my art etc etc because that's where I live off of. Yeah, I think sometimes it's really difficult to sort of balance that all out and keep doing all the things. I also want to get my new collection out soon. I was planning on doing it a few weeks earlier, but there's been some setbacks. I mean, there's always setbacks <laughs> when you have a web shop. I had designed some scarves and they are so cute. Maybe I will go with one of the manufacturers I found I have the best feeling about and which report of their factory rules I looked into and it looked good to me. But yeah, it's still scary. I overthink a lot of the things as well. I also just had a chat with a new therapist this morning. Or well, a potential new therapist. I actually don't think she's going to be my new therapist. Like, there's nothing wrong with her. But she is pregnant, so she's not sure, like, how long she'll be available for therapy. And I just really want to find a therapist that I can rely on for a longer time. Because, you know, if you open up to somebody and you build something and then they have to go again. And like, of course she's kind of come back after she gives birth. But still, I don't know if that's the best fit for right now. Actually, it's been such a long time since I've done like a get ready with me whilst chatting to you guys. It's actually great fun. Maybe I should have just done this for my video. <laughs> I could have also filmed Book Chat and Chill, which is a series I did on my channel like way back. I have been thinking of like blowing new life into that series, series <laughs> i was pushing on it with my beauty blender <laughs> wow i'm such a singer so i was thinking of reviving that series but oh, it doesn't hit the same when i don't say series <laughs> sorry i'm very chaotic today i say that as if i'm not chaotic in literally every video i'm feeling a bit down about myself today actually like i don't like my youtube channel and i don't know what i'm doing and oh, but it's just a mood and it will probably pass <laughs> i spent the morning looking up other therapists and making a little list again I have an intake with another therapist on Monday, so I'm just going to wait to see how that goes. I've been having a lot of anxiety again lately, mostly about my company and my future. I don't know. I love my job, but sometimes it's a lot of responsibility that's all me. Like, it's just me. There's no one else to share in the responsibility of my art shop and my business and the way I make a living. And sometimes I can all of a sudden really feel that strain. But I don't want to whine about it because obviously I'm super, super grateful for the work I get to do. And I love my work and I love reading and I love sharing. Oh, I look so white right now, but don't worry. I am going to attempt to fix that with some blush. I always wear a lot of blush. I don't know. I just, I really enjoy blush. I think it makes me look alive. So I had a few panic attacks as well last week and I was not really vibing. <laughs> I know you guys always enjoy when I keep it real, but sometimes it's difficult because you want to balance out like still keeping things to yourself and not sharing everything, but also being honest about, you know, my life's not perfect. My life's not like aesthetic vibes and like amazing all the time. And I am really happy and a generally positive person. I would say, I mean, I'm like really negative and positive at the same time, if that makes sense. <laughs> Don't think it does make sense. But like my anxiety is really negative. My anxiety is like pumping out worst case scenarios by the minute. But like as a person, I tend to be quite positive and I love looking at the bright side of things. I'm really one that is all about like enjoying the little things, etc. I'm really good at enjoying the little things as well when I'm not being eaten away alive by my anxiety at least <laughs> casual just a casual thing i'm bringing up <laughs> so yeah i think my day was already a little bit derailed from the meeting with the therapist and now it's just completely derailed because i was supposed to film a video and i haven't filmed anything <laughs> and i don't feel like filming anything either i have been so good about uploading every week so i don't want to break my like 
strike. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe she just filmed something simple, but I don't know. I was thinking of filming like my favorite high fantasy books of all time, or maybe a video on how I annotate my books or something about journaling, but I've just journaled the whole morning. So I should have probably journaled something related to books if I wanted to do that for YouTube. I have been enjoying journaling a lot more lately. I've also shared it a lot more in my vlogs. That's been really nice. Maybe she just upload this vlog next week and I'll be fine. I'm really talking about a thousand different subjects at the same time. <laughs> and I just know that when I'm gonna watch back this footage, I'm going to be like, oh, I look deeply uncharming doing my makeup. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem for editing Leo, so. Good luck with that, bestie. <laughs> I was like, I'll do my eyeliner off camera because I cannot do that for the life of me on camera, but it turns out I can also not do it for the life of me off camera. <laughs> Sometimes you have one of those days, you do your eyeliner and you look at yourself and you're like, okay, so eyeliner should not be twins, they should be sisters, but mine are like distant cousins that I've never met before in their life. <laughs> I also don't think it helps, it's like the most dreary day we've seen in a while in the Netherlands today, it's like raining, but at least I'm wearing my floral skirt. Turns out I cannot do mascara and keep up a line of conversation that actually makes sense at the same time, so <laughs> that's great. There's mascara all over my eyelid, but I kind of cannot be bothered today, and if I'm not going to film anyway, then who's going to see that? Well, you guys, I guess. <laughs> so actually, about my books, I did finish Nestle and Bone, and I'm really excited about it because actually it picked up quite a bit in the end. They finally got to do their mission, the thing they came for. I'm of course not going to tell you how that went and if the mission went right, but I was definitely hooked um, at this point, finally. <laughs> Took a long time. I think some of T. Kingfisher's classic humour started to shine through more as well as soon as we got into the scenes with some more action. But I still think, compared to a lot of T. Kingfisher books, this book just felt a little bit disjointed. Like, it's, I don't know, something about the pacing maybe, or maybe it's just me. I did read it over a really long period of time, so <laughs> that could also be it. And I did realise I've not mentioned my audiobook at all that I was listening to, but that is Transmogrify, and I've been having a great time with this. It is so good. I am usually not really one for short story collections. They never really work with me because I need, like, a longer thing to sort of... I don't know, I like when there's a longer story, so you have something that you build up to and you get, like, attached to the characters. But this short story collection really drew me because it's all focused on trans authors and trans characters writing about magic academies, magic schools, witches, just like magical things, like making a place for magical characters that are trans. And I just thought that was such a good idea and such a great concept. And also I love me a magic school. If there's a magic school, that is something I want to read. So I started this short story collection on audio. It's also something I'd never heard of before, so that also appealed to me, I think. I always love discovering new things. And I do also want to do like an underrated books video soon, like maybe underrated cozy fantasy, but I feel like maybe I've been laying it on too thick with all the cozy fantasy content, even though I really do love making that content. I don't know, maybe I should switch it up a little bit more. But I've listened to, I think, almost half of the book and it's been so cozy so far and so cute. There was this one story that was my favourite. I kind of wish I could listen to it again. It was all about these two kids who were in this class about tending to dragons and learning to care for dragons and they got like an egg that was not supposed to hatch into a dragon, but it did. And then they sort of secretly raised this dragon within the magic school and it was Oh, the vibes were amazing. There was also some tension between them, like they learned to be themselves and it was just, it was really, really cute. I was just having a really, really good time with that book. <laughs> As you can see, my method of doing makeup is very messy. It's just, I don't know what I'm doing to be honest. Which is why I always find it a little bit funny if people ask me for makeup advice and they're like, could you do a makeup tutorial? I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I really enjoy that story so, and there's been some other stories that I really liked as well. Especially all the ones that are witch focused. I'm just a witch girly. I did think some of the stories had some pop culture references that were just laid on really, really thick. And I don't 
tend to not really enjoy that. So that's something I didn't really like. But if you want to check out a really diverse and really funny, cozy fantasy novel with several short stories, I think as an audiobook it works amazing as well because you get to read like different short stories and there's something else like drawing you in every time. And it's nice because if you finish the one short story on the audiobook, you can, you know, it doesn't matter how long you wait until you pick up the next one. So I love that. So I do recommend it. So yeah, I've definitely been enjoying my audiobook and I have also started a new book, but I'm kind of doubting whether I should make a whole different reading vlog on that because it's a cozy mystery and it's kind of wild so far. I don't like, I don't know. There's been a lot of funny things, but there's also been a few things that were said in it. And I was like, <laughs> what are they talking about? Um, I think I'm probably just going to put it in this vlog anyway. The thing is also because the cover looked so retro, I thought it was like an old novel but then i discovered it was published in 2022 i think so it's like not old at all it's actually new i'm on page 72 right now in the bayou book thief oh she's so cute look at that book it's so tiny it's like a little pocket book one of my favorite things about this so far is that we follow ricky diaz and she gets to work in a new museum cookbook vintage cookbook store that she's opening in the museum and she's like cut ties with her old life because her husband suddenly died doing a social media stunt because he was a youtuber so embarrassing he died because he was stuffing marshmallows in his face like in his mouth to see how many he could fit and then he choked and that's my worst nightmare <laughs> if i were to go in such a fashion that would be so embarrassing to everybody involved. And that's exactly how our main character feels about her husband, her late husband as well. Then there's this awful employee that's stealing books and then that employee turns up dead in a trunk and then Ricky has to find out who did it. I've just arrived at the point where this man turns out in a trunk and actually the murder weapon really got to me. I, I kind of don't want to spoil it, but I do want to spoil it. So just, if you don't want to have spoilers, then click away. But just like, <laughs> let me read this to you. So funny to me. I mean, it's not funny that he died, but it's just, this book is very funny. There were no books inside the antique repository. Instead, inside lay the crumpled, very dead body of Franklin Finblock, with a depression era can opener jutting from his neck. So, so far there's a character that died by marshmallows and now there's one that died by getting a depression era can opener stuck in his neck. What a way to go. What a way to go. And then another thing I just have to mention is when the main character sees some children screaming inside the shop and she says that her sudden urge to procreate has vanished completely. I'm like, that's me. Whenever I see a cute baby on the metro, I'm like, Look at those cheeks, look at those eyes, adorable. And then the baby starts to cry and my urge to procreate vanishes as soon as it appears. <laughs> so I've been having a good time with this. Maybe I should just be kind to myself. I did work a lot of hours this week and just like make myself a nice drink, sit down to read some more and not think too much. That's really difficult for me, but I think I might just attempt it. So <laughs> did I follow my own plan and relax? No, I worked, but I did finish a sticker sheet and made some more reels, so. At least I was a little bit productive and now I'm finally gonna go home to my family. I really hope I'm going to get less grumpy on my train ride because I don't wanna be grumpy near my family. My sister's birthday is tomorrow and I'm actually really excited for that. I guess we all have these days, right? Like at the beginning of this vlog, I was really happy because the sun was shining and now it's raining and I'm immediately not having a good time. <laughs> I hope none of you are thinking right now like, oh my God, she's such a drama queen, but yeah. <laughs>
Guess what? It's sunny again outside today and my mood is immediately 20 times better. I'm very predictable, but I also had quite a good weekend at my parents' place and it's always nice to be surrounded by people again. If you live alone, sometimes you forget how nice it can be to be surrounded by people for a few days on end and it definitely can make a difference in your mood. I don't know what it is. Maybe just that there's like other people discussing their things and you know it's like you're not with yourself and your worries and your things the whole time anymore. So I had a great weekend at home. We went to a concert on Saturday to celebrate my sister's birthday and I also gave her my birthday gift. I bought her a coffee cup. I had been eyeing these coffee cups because they have really cute ones at this store I know. And I saw like really colourful and adorable ones, but I know my sister is more like minimalist than I am. So I got her a black and white drawing one and I'm not sure she liked it, but I hope she did because I really had to restrain myself from buying like the cute pink cups. <laughs> and I did also finish my current read, which I'm very excited about. And I've also listened a bit more to my audiobook. So the audiobook I was listening to is Transmogrify, which is a short story collection with all these magical trans stories about trans people being in magical situations. I just listened to two stories this morning. One was kind of a trans Cinderella retelling, which was really magical. Like it had an evil stepmom that was transphobic. So I did not like her clearly, but the whole, like I think Cinderella lends itself really well as a fairy tale to put this story into. So that was really lovely. And the whole magical dress thing and transformation was beautiful. And then I also listened to this story about a magical sport being played on brooms. Really reminded me of one sport you might all know and that's something i've been noticing that a lot of these stories kind of reference back to harry potter in a way it's definitely like a little bit of a jab like we can do this too and we're capable of this and i love that reclaiming energy i think at first i was just annoyed with these pop culture references and at some point i figured out like oh it's it's just this specifically which makes sense to me at the same time what a lovely collection of short stories the narrators are also wonderful it's like a different one for each story and i think there's like a few recurring ones and i just love the magical vibes i love that there's a place for trans people in the magical fantasy worlds that are built here and sometimes they're fighting for their place but i just think it's beautiful to see that representation and i love that and yeah the stories are very fun as well then when it comes to the bayo book thief by ellen byron i've read this book so quickly i just kind of there was this moment where i wasn't sure i was into it but then when it picked up it really picked up as soon as the murder happened and then even later on a second murder happens i was really hooked i just also really enjoyed the vibes of this it's like very gilmore girls-esque like small town everybody is kind of nosy and getting in each other's business and i really enjoyed the bon v house as like a culinary place and like a historical museum and then her cookbook store and it's like all so cozy and cute and it's really really enjoyable the mystery was quite good as well i did not see coming who had done it but that's mainly because there's such an abundance of characters in this book that that you get confused at every turn like it just kept happening to me where i'd be like who's that i'm sorry i'm not following this there's so many characters in this it's actually wild so that definitely kept me on edge some of the plot twists were also definitely a bit silly but i don't know it's it's like a fun book you know it's still a good time i did a lot of um folding pages where i thought there were some funny lines because this book definitely has a lot of lines that are like kind of ridiculous but in a good way so i enjoyed myself with that she owns a vintage cookbook store and there's this romance series which by the way sounds amazing that's been written by a pseudonym and it's i am amour which is like god and this is like a ranchy spicy romance series with like recipes in it as well but the recipes will have really silly names like a very sexy souffle like stuff like that i don't know it's hilarious she's like a vintage book geek and she's talking about first editions like holding first editions and she's like it was magic ricky spoke in a whisper recalling the almost sexual ecstasy she felt and i was like okay well i i'm a big time book lover and i don't think i've experienced that and there was more little moments like that that just kind of make this book a very funny and quirky in a genuine way sometimes books try really really hard to be quirky or have a quirky main character and i think genuinely this is just a quirky funny book so that's a big compliment and I really enjoyed it. It was not my favorite thing ever. I was kind of in the mood for more of like a Criminal Minds-esque vibe thriller. So obviously I shouldn't have picked up A Cozy Mystery, but I still had a great time. I'm really excited to enjoy the sun today. I already had a little walk this morning and I'm going to work on some webshop things. I really want to get my new collection out there very soon. I'm very excited for this upcoming week. The weather is finally going to be a lot better, so I cannot wait. Let me know, is there anything you guys are really looking forward to this next upcoming week? Let me know in the comments 
comments down below what you're reading, whether you enjoyed this vlog, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my web shop and support me as an artist and a creator. I would really appreciate that and love that, and you can treat yourself on some nice bookish goodies. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you so much for watching!